we struggle to actually meet the deadlines because when we finish the planning and the schedule is accepted, then we are usually over time, right? Yeah. So, uh, so this is something that was changed in the software industry. And actually I see this on construction side. So there's also another level of planning, which is more tactical planning, which we, we work at Hustry with, right? So you have a coordination meeting with your subcontractors you want to assign tasks quickly. You want to visually see who works where, right? And you just work with it. This, the, the strategic guns is a bit different thing, right? And it's usually a bit outdated because people on site, they do not want to, you know, have like 5,000 elements to fill every time they sit in front of a computer. They just want to say, yeah, I did it. Yeah. I finished it. Or I Hello, Gavin Coyle. I'm the gaffer and we're back with a superb guest today. Looking forward to this one. I had this guy lined up a couple of times and through probably my issues or his issues, we, we, we didn't manage to get there, but we're here today. And it, this guy is an innovator, a leader, CEO of a company called Hustro, H-U-S-T-R-O. And particularly got my um, attention because he was disrupting some of the top five so-called uh, construction company technology experts, if you like, or platforms that are out there and decided, no, I'm going to swim upstream and I'm going to make a better uh, version of that and I'm going to have a mission purpose for it as well that is well-founded. Uh, from from the conversation we have with, with him today, you'll understand where I'm coming from. He's got a fantastic background. He's got a legal background where... He was involved in arbitration within the construction industry. So he's not one of these tech guys that just, you know, got involved with the construction industry because he has a tech head. He's been involved in construction for a long time. He's also helping um, startups in Poland uh, better themselves and get on the scale and maturity roadmap and helping them with that. And he's just, he's just a really interesting guy. That I think even if you take one or two things away from today's talk, I think you'll be, you know, pretty impressed with this guy because make a note in the next couple of years, this, this business that he's heading up and that he developed is definitely going to make an imprint on the construction technology market. And with that, Ernest Zadelsky is my guest today. Ernest, welcome to I'm the Gaffer. Gavin, that was very generous. Uh, so thank you. It's great to be here. And just for the listeners, you are in Poland at the moment. That's where your HQ is, yeah. Yes, exactly. Wrocław, Wrocław, Poland. Okay. Um, this is where where I work from every day, almost. Uh, at least I try. Okay. So, do we have anything to say to the Polish audience that might be listening in to us today? Uh, to the Polish, uh, to the Polish audience from the construction side, just uh, and all the Polish people in UK and Ireland, just yes. to się do roboty. Uh, so I just told them to get back to work and listen to this over weekend uh, <laughs> because they probably are missing a deadline right now. Uh, if you're looking, listening to this in your car, you're excused. So uh, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Or, or you know, look, they can listen to it on YouTube or watch it on YouTube later on. Um, where do we start? I would love to get in under the bonnet with yourself, uh, you know, Talk to me about your upbringing, your 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 background, growing up, and how you you landed into the construction industry or into the legal industry. I suppose bring us up to that point, Ernest. Well, well I made a, I watched a lot of legal movies when I was little, so that gave me a false impression of how the legal work actually is, uh, and made it more glamorous than it actually is. I think if you if you actually want to see what the legal work is, just go and watch Better Call Saul. Uh, and maybe not about the you know Saul Goodman uh, character, but uh, everybody around them. Uh, so see how what kind of grind the legal work is actually. Um, but uh, I, I really wanted to be a lawyer for most of my life. Uh, so, so I went to legal studies. I started working in a law firm in working construction, basically. So, so we uh, we helped construction companies in their disputes. So either they were like uh, general contractors, subcontractors, investors. As you know, there's a lot of issues uh, between those parties. Yeah. Uh, there are contractual penalties. There are defects. Uh, there are documentation issues. Uh, so I was on the forefront as a young lawyer, 
uh, trying to put all those cases together without knowing anything about construction, right? So, okay. um, uh, so I was always a lawyer. I always loved technology, and my actually first job was selling some ERP systems with my brother. But, uh, but uh, working construction as a lawyer was the was the first time after studies, and I noticed that a lot of those conflicts uh, that I had to deal with out of the documentation I had to put together um, was around situations that were didn't have much of a point. They were contentious, very, very contentious, but um, were made by mistakes or just simple oversight. So uh, I, I have a, one of my favorite examples that made me you know, actually think about how can we solve a problem, maybe understand the problem, was when uh, I had to prepare documentation for litigation uh, that actually started with an issue that could have been saved on a construction, solved on a construction with like 500 euro. Um, and somebody communicated the issue to a subcontractor and by like talking to the subcontractor, then somebody sent a WhatsApp, then somebody sent a text message, then it was a part of an email. Uh, and then in another email, there were a couple of meetings that this was mentioned, but was never fixed. And when the end of the project, you know, uh, uh, came, the issue wasn't fixed. It actually caused a delay and the delay caused constructual penalties. And so the GC wanted to push this to the subcontractor, actually rightfully so. And uh, it had to go to court for some weird reason. So uh, we had to spend the next uh, three years dis disputing this issue of like 500 euro. And I myself, as a young lawyer, I had to take 782 emails, print them out and trying to understand what actually happened, get all those messages, trying to understand the, the whole communication structure. And I actually had to find back them a construction manager that already moved to another part of the country uh, and wasted a lot of his time trying to even understand what happened. So that kind of, um, first of all, I, I really loved working with construction people. So yeah. uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the whole environment is awesome. And uh, I, I'm really envious that, uh, you know, people in construction can make something and look at it later. And it's part of the landscape for like ages, for hundreds of years of them, right? So it's, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Uh, second is the, like the most diverse industry that I worked with, right? So we have people that have PhDs and are professors and experts. You have people working together with people that maybe didn't even finish like the second grade. That's Sometimes right. it happens. Yeah. So uh, it's like the most diverse um, when it comes to experiences, knowledge, education, uh, yeah. place that you can think about. And based on this, also, you know, has a lot of problems with communication. So yeah. uh, that made me think there are some problems in this industry. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I could sell, uh, you know, solve them at some point without actually going to litigation with all the cases. Wow. So, th so that was the <clears throat> catalyst for setting up post show. Uh, yeah, it, you know, some some years went by. So so I went to working in uh, like investment banking. Then I, I became a salesperson and startup uh, in real estate. Then I opened my own like software services company, sold it, and then I had enough experience in in building software to be able to actually uh, start doing something about the problem uh, that I thought about, you know, yeah. like six years before or seven years before. Wow. Uh, so if I did something in, you know, back then, probably this wouldn't go out from, you know, talking to my friends or from my room. But after some time getting experience on actually working through uh, software pro products, software projects, uh, I knew what, what challenges would be and actually how to understand the, peop the problems of the people on site. Right. So yeah. uh, I think there is a skill set behind trying to understand the people that you work for, trying to understand the problems that you work for. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, it, you know, it, you have to learn how to actually do it uh, to understand other people's perspectives. Yeah. Um, you also got the complexity of culture um, in terms of companies having their own way of doing things and, and not the common uh, culture for a project. So you might have 
multiple contractors on one pr project, all with different ways of what they believe is best in class for delivering uh, their service. And yeah, uh, yeah, it seems to be that nobody really gets that one spot on in terms of bringing everybody together in the spirit before the job starts and says, look, you know, let's create a value based system where we're all agreeing to work to a certain standard and a certain open communication methods and a way of being, you know, uh, having a sort of an open door policy for everybody to, to walk in and, and, and to freely discuss if there is an issue rather than hiding issues and then they become a bigger issue then later on. What's, what's the landscape like in your territory of, of Poland in terms of construction and do you have any sort of benchmark? Uh, do you use the UK uh, as a benchmark for construction in Poland? Or, you know, I know you're not just defined by the, the Polish markets, but it'd be interesting to get some background about how construction where it is, mm -hmm. the standards, where the standards are in Poland for construction at the moment. Uh, so standards are being formed and uh, are a bit all over the place. So we have very, so, so our industry, as I think in every country, is very, very, very regulated. So yeah. when you compare construction to uh, software development industries, there's almost no comparison. There's uh, no uh, no code for building software but there's a, a lot of a lot of regulations on how buildings have to be built or infrastructure has to be built so i think that's that's the common ground so uh, uh heavy regulation from from the uh the government right um there are uh, ho however i see also a lot of um organization trying to do some bottom-up standardization uh coming from safety right now esg is a big uh big discussion i believe you know esg uh, norms were largely made thinking about manufacturing uh yes. and when you think about decentralized industry as diverse as construction this doesn't always make sense to follow the same structure of of information right so um uh, and uh, for example, Polish Builders Association tries to create standards uh, for, and they already did some some like uh, white papers for energetics for uh, works in environmental protection uh, investments, right? So um, there is uh, more and more organization and trying just to do like bottom up regulation uh, on what kind of standards should we follow to be more effective. Um, because our industry, even though digitization has been here for a long time, there are some nice concepts like BIM, right? BIM has been uh, a concept for like 30 years already. And uh, even and for the 30 years, construction is actually dropping in productivity, even though, though we are trying to change some things. Um, so I, I really appreciate new thoughts in this uh, in this areas. And uh, I recently even had a very interesting conversation about, you know, as, as we are working at Hastro in, in construction management software, uh, something that you mentioned, uh, having the common ground, common data environment, maybe is very important. Yeah. Um, and the, my, my colleague said, like, like is it? Uh, because if you have one software solution that every party has to work with and report in, you lose the ownership of data for parties that have to report up. Yeah. Plus, pretty obvious, uh, not everything will be reported because there is yeah. no incentive for transparency. There is only, often only downside to like reporting. What is it in subcontractors best interest to use like one of the CDE software solutions and report all of the issues that they are trying to solve. It's not, no, it's no. like, for me, it's not, not in the best interest of myself to show our users that we have like bugs during the production of our software. And it actually doesn't make much sense to be honest, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so the, the thought is currently that, uh, we are trying to make those like, buckets of information that talk to each other. So everybody feels comfortable with the data they're producing. 
um, they are sure that they own the information that they have, you know, and fun is not so funny story here. Actually, I talked to a real estate investor, a developer that required uh, their general contractor to provide common data system uh, uh, solution on their project. And the investor was reporting through the system owned by the GC. At the end of the project, uh, the GC took away the access to that system. They only gave them like uh, unstructured data. And then issues started to you know arise and, and investor as they, you know, the investor wasn't in charge of his own bucket of information, yeah. he couldn't do anything with this, right? 100%, so yeah. 100%. Uh, this is this is why why they said that this is a, a bit of an illusion that we yeah. want to have everybody, uh, you know, knowing everybody should work uh, with everybody and there should be just, you know, unicorns and rainbows and we should high five each other and give compliments <laughs> for, for the job done. And that would be beautiful, but, uh, um, I don't think that the structure, the financial structure of the project doesn't work that way. No. There are contractual penalties for a reason. Uh, there are health and safety penalties for a reason as well as the last, you know, way of, of uh, trying to figure something out or, or push somebody to the good direction. But there are established for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, there is, you know, I think we we have been trying to digitize construction and increase the productivity for a long time by pushing down the solutions that have been used in manufacturing and other industries and work there pretty well without really asking what the problems are and are we fixing our problems with the easiest solution, which is the perfect way to actually increase the productivity in the sector, right? Yeah. So uh, I see that there is a change in this. In Poland, we, we are actually working right now in eight countries, so I see Depending on, on the country, the, 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 there is a change, there is a more acceptance for, for change. However, there are some psychological elements that are the same, right? It's like we, error or of omission, for example, it's like a well established psychological standard that blocks people from changing. And I'm not saying that changing to like, like no new software solution, right? Just yeah. changing anything, making anything better. Yeah. So our brain thinks that what we are working with right now is the best option and changing anything uh, is actually an exercise for our brain, right? So we have to understand our limits and that it's a barrier and that we have to overcome this barrier because without this, it will be very hard to, to change to anything, right? So so I see that some elements are going better, uh, especially from the digitization front. More and more people are used to using their phones, right? Yeah. Um, even when, when sometimes I have conversations with uh, with people saying, you know, our subcontractors are never going to use software solutions. They are, you know, they they they're in the past. Yeah, yeah, they're in the past. But yeah. then then I ask the question: Do you see what they are doing when they, when they are not working? Yeah, and they are usually on Instagram, Telegram, or TikTok. you know, TikTok, TikTok. or whatever. So if yeah. they if they manage TikTok, they will manage your <laughs> software solution. You yeah. just have to um, figure out how to organize the change process in a way that everybody understands and, and you understand that there will be some challenges uh, on the road to being more effective, right? Yeah. Now, I, um, we had first-hand experience in my own company where a client was insisting on us using... Uh, a third party software that they wanted to use for time control or time management. So they wanted air guys to be onboarded onto that system. They didn't own that system. They were bringing that in from a third party. Mm -hmm. So it was a total kind of uh, confusion on everybody. So the person that was training air guys on getting up to speed with this time management software, he was just given. Yeah. He was just given the in, uh, instruction as per from a software point of view of mm -hmm. how the system works, but the clients didn't get involved. So there was a whole procurement issue with with the clients because if you didn't have the right project co project numbers, project codes, budget codes, 
or whatever data needed to be put into that. The system, there was no, the, the system didn't work. And so uh, it just caused yeah. absolute chaos uh, amongst everybody. And then people get sort of demotivated with the whole thing. And now here, I'm not even, I'm not touching that. Like, Yeah, this is, you know, um, there, there are some, some mistakes that can be done. So there is an element of ma magical thinking behind, especially introducing like huge solutions for everything. Yeah. Uh, that you would customize and ultimately you'll figure everything out and you will not have to adjust to a tool that you're using. The choose tool will adjust to you perfectly. And it's magical thinking because it usually takes ages to configure. Yeah. Um, takes, you know, uh, it might initially does, doesn't, uh, wouldn't cost that much, but uh, at some point when you start counting the hours of people yeah. trying to figure this thing out, uh, <laughs> Uh, this just takes uh, forever. I, I think actually medical industry, at least uh, in Poland, but I, you know, when I talk to people, it works very similarly in, in different countries. Uh, so uh, when I go to a doctor, like in a public space in Poland, the doctor spends about like 75% of uh, our visit, not talking to me, but just writing up into, you know, their no. assistance, right? Yeah. Uh, notes, all of this. And yeah. uh, it kind of kills the point, uh, it of course organized the, the information, but then the information is fragmented as well because somebody, well, we are coming to the procurement <laughs> issues um, and uh, systems that don't talk to each other, but rather than having a tool that will help you in your everyday work, you have a tool that distracts you from your yes. everyday work. Um, I even had a situation like this myself. I'm pretty terrible at cold calling. This is not something like uh, I, I'm not great at just picking up the phone and getting a list of numbers. Uh, it, it's not in my nature, but I, I wanted to train. So I actually uh, went to a real estate company and I said, I'll do cold calls for you. So I'll, I'll organize some meetings for you. I will have like no um, no risk connected to this and I'll, I'll feel better about this. Right. So, and I actually resigned after three days because after every call, uh, uh I actually, yeah, I got accustomed to, to the cold calling is fine. But after every call, I had to spend uh, about 15 minutes writing everything down, uh, and, and putting this into numerous systems. Right. So this, uh, this is extremely frustrating. And this is why digitization, when it's not done right, is becoming uh, an issue rather than a solution. Uh, and this is something that we really think about all the time. So especially when, when we are dealing with the ta tactical elements of, um, of work. So you want to submit an information about an issue, right? You want to conduct an inspection. You want to find the right documentation that you need to work on. Uh, the usability of the solution and the, how quick it is for you to work is a necessity because otherwise, you know, the people on site, especially, they will not just, they want to do it, right? They know you will not find uh, other people for, for that, you know, to exchange them with. Uh, they will not do it and you will not have this information because the, their job is not sitting in front of a desk and just putting information in a computer. They need to have tools um, that are very easy to use uh, for them. And, and I see also on the market that there is, uh, uh, there is a trend of making smaller solutions uh, uh, sometimes that talk to each other through like REST uh, API. Uh, thanks to this, everybody has their own perspective, owns their information, right? Yeah. But they can also like report up or down or whatever somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, but with tools that will, you know, take, that have to be as easy as WhatsApp, that have to be as easy as uh, Facebook, uh, Maybe you know not as addicting and uh, uh, annoying as TikTok, but uh, you know uh, you you get the point. Uh, yeah. What we are trying to do and what I believe will push the change in a, in the good direction is focusing on the problems and how to solve those problems in the easiest way uh, for our users, right? So but I, 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 I sorry to crash you, but I think I think you've hit a really important point um, on that. Is maybe just not enough. Um, pre-planning in this area before delving in and putting the two feet in to buy software. Maybe there's not enough due diligence done 
on what is the priority that we're trying to achieve here in terms of efficiencies. And I suppose if people talk more about well, what's important, is safety the issue, is quality the issue, is price and cost the issue, is labour the issue, and then maybe have a sort of a risk register of which is the one that's 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 the biggest problem at the moment. And maybe there might be a solution or maybe there might not be a solution. But what I see is probably uh, go back to the cold calling is that software software companies or cold calling companies and other are they marketing to companies and saying, look, you know, get on board with us. We'll make all of your paperwork more efficient and we'll make you a better company and you won't have to worry about anything because you'll just worry about building the product and we'll have all the back the back office done, which is not actually the case really, I don't think, in the majority of the construction industry where they're probably not tier one, they might be tier two or tier three contractors. How do you uh, respond to that? Uh, I completely agree. There, uh, there is a way of procuring software, and you know, um, I'm also on the buying side, so we use a lot of software solution in Hustler, right? So, I'm using a software solution that does AI notes uh, summaries for all of my meetings. I'm using uh, AI solutions that help me brainstorm, you know, new articles. Uh, I, I'm using CRMs and systems for managing our projects. And um, so we bought a lot of software and you actually buy software and this life cycles from finding software and implementing this with, with the, within the organization takes about a month. Uh, so a person finds a software, we compare this quickly, something we like, fixes our problem, it works for one person, then we try to you know, test this with a couple of other people. If it works, we implement it for the whole company. And you know, uh, if it doesn't work, then we resign after a couple of months, uh, right? So, uh, but it's not that much based on, so uh, what I can see sometimes is like you have a team and you want to do like your job very, very well. You want to find like the best solution. So what do you do? You write down all the functions that you would like to have in the software, right? And then you have like a huge list of all the functions and what is the easiest way here, right? I'll, I'll just try to find one solution that has all the functions. And um, uh, yeah, and then, then you end up with a never ending implementation of yeah. something, right? Yeah. Uh, or, or something that will be overly complex. Um, and it can be done, but you have to take into account that all of your problems will not be solved at once ever, right? Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it's like you can see it, like people would, they only give maybe 50 or 70% of their time to one function and then they're moving on to the next function and then the next function and nothing is getting, nothing's getting completed. Because mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just doing little bits of every part because you think you have to get this whole system together and you don't. Yeah. You actually, like, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. You could be, you could spend maybe 12 months just on, on timesheets just to get that right. Yeah. And I'm sure you have uh, experience. I, I, I have experience with, like, uh, I remember one huge software project that I worked with and, uh, we had a analyst that was supposed to uh, map the process that was going to be implemented in this ERP solution. And just mapping the process and figuring out how this would work took a year and a half, just yeah. mapping, right? And he did a great job mapping this, <laughs> awesome. But we lost a year and a half not wow. having a tool that would simplify our lives, right? So something that at least works for me is to try when I understand the problem, uh, I'm trying to find a solution that will fix like 80% of the problem. Um, because usually the 10% takes like huge amounts of time. I don't know why it usually does because the 10% is like very specific for my business. Yeah. And uh, I can, you know, I'm not a huge organization. If you have like huge corporation, go for it because you have budget and you have maybe time to do this, right? To do this like perfectly over time or you want to even wait till the moment then it's perfect. But usually when you wait this year and a half till the, till the moment is perfect, usually something changed. Yeah. So then you have to reanalyze this. Yeah. So 
uh, well, usually my, my solution here is because I'm a lazy person and I don't have like a huge team uh, of analysts. Uh, we try to find something that will solve our everyday problems very quickly. Uh, then and then we evolve, right? So implementation of our CRM, so, so software that will organize our sales. Right? So you also can some some construction people, uh, some construction companies also use CRMs. Um, there are even some you know very cool options for like subcontractors for organizing your offerings that are dedicated. Like Rhinodox, for example, is a pretty cool option uh, where you can create your offers and organize and understand the profit margins of everything. So. Uh, I ha I very encourage everybody to use something like a CRM system to understand what are your offerings, what are the tenders, yeah. how are we doing? Do, do are we actually making any money on those jobs that we are doing? Because yeah. we uh, thought that the profit will be this, and how it works out in the end is another thing. Um, so uh, implementing CRM for our sales team, the first one took like three days, and everybody started using this, and we just uh, once a month. Once, once a quarter, we sit down, we try to find out what we can fix to make life easier for others. Or yeah. we have like meetings uh, where somebody says, hey, I, I'm missing this information. Where can we add this? So yes. we have just, you know, more, more as, uh, ask the provider or, or we try, try to add something like this. Or if it's not important, we just skip it. So yeah. uh, trying to not solve everything perfectly, but trying to be agile and adjust. So, in construction, there is, and actually every project-based business, we have an approach where we have to plan the whole thing, and then we struggle to actually meet the deadlines because when we finish the planning and the schedule is accepted, then we are usually over time, right? Yeah. So, uh, so this is something that was changed in the software industry, and actually I see this on construction side. So there is also another level of planning, which is more tactical planning. Which we, we work at Hustru with, right? So you have a coordination meeting with your subcontractors. You want to assign tasks quickly. You want to visually see who works where, right? And you just work with it. This, the, the strategic guns is a bit different thing, right? And it's usually yeah. a bit outdated because people on site, they do not want to, you know, have like 5,000 elements to fill every time they sit in front of a computer. They just want to say, yeah, I did it. Yeah. finished it or Checklist. Checklist. hey man yeah, yeah you have to finish this particular element uh, you have this task this task will be on this area yeah finish this task tell me it's done yeah we can fit this information higher but this solves the problem of lack of information and this yeah. has to be easy enough for everybody on construction site to use and you're golden whatever you use if you have data coming from your subcontractors your team yeah you can organize everything else, right? There's billion of solutions that can organize this information in a charts, you know, guns and, and so on. Yeah. But when you do not have the, the tools for this, like the biggest problems of data gathering points, then then you have some issues. There yeah. are some, you know, great ideas for the future on how to do this. So you have uh, like solutions for reality capture uh, that that are pretty awesome where you can like the 3d scans you can have like drone uh, uh, drones inspections uh, our, I, I don't think we are still there to make this like bulletproof solution for construction all the time uh, uh, as sometimes I do not see the like the return on investment on a lot of those solutions because the return on investment is not that much focused on saving the time of people on construction sites rather based on avoiding risks in the future right yeah yeah. So it's not that easy to calculate, uh, but the future can work in a couple of ways. One, I believe, uh, comes from optimizing the management a little bit better. So uh, I think having assistants uh, uh, and people on site that in, in, in software, you have like scrum masters, which is called yeah. scrum master role. And the role of that person is to actually find out what is blocking other people in the team, right? Yeah. And uh, I do not see a lot of those people on construction side because you usually have a budget. You only have the, all the engineers that you need to have. And, uh, and adding such people, uh, I, I believe it's a great way to teach young you know, uh, engineers on how to actually manage projects because the soft skills 
you know, uh, there are great engineers everywhere. Uh, I think there are not so many great managers, right? Because it's completely different skill set, but this would teach them how to go into that direction. Second, using the tools to take away most of the time spent on the things that engineers and managers shouldn't spend the time on. So documentation, keeping the knowledge in, organizing your work, right? So uh, using uh, note taker applications, using task managers, whatever you use, it will be better than what you have right now. I, I, I still talk to some people that think, yeah, I'm, I'm a, Inspection. I'm an inspector, and I manage. Uh, I, in, you know, I'm overseeing 20 construction sites, and I do everything in my head. Uh, and I say, congratulations, you are the smartest person I've met in my life. Go for it, right? Uh, but uh, if somebody is more humble than that, uh, I think uh, any type of organization of information is needed to increase the productivity. I think the productivity is. Not only decreasing because the like the people on constructions I don't want to change because they do and they are like very innovative people, uh, but we have more regulations. We have more complex construction projects, right? We have new types of construction projects. Who thought? Who thought about you know all those solar plants uh, like twenty years ago? So you have different levels of things, uh, different types of uh, of projects, and different level of complexity uh, of everything. So. Uh, we just need to try to take down the barriers of, of actually making this happen because it's, uh, um, I think, yeah, uh, this is quite embarrassing for our whole uh, industry. Well, get, just, uh, just give us, be able to make to be better. Give us a, Ernest, give us a, an overview of Hustro. Just because I think you're, like, you're taking on a massive challenge, as you're probably aware of yourself, in terms of what that product does actually do. And, you know, for anyone that's listening, it's not a sales pitch for Ernest, but like he's he's taken on the big guns uh, in this space uh, with a much more affordable, much more flexible, and a much more, I would suggest, practical software system uh, that could be implemented in construction. That's why I wanted to get him on, is to prove or dispel the fact that you need to spend hundreds of thousands of euro on software to get it right. So maybe just give us a sense of if if I have a fifty person construction company, for example, what could Hustro do for me? So uh, first of all, we'll help you organize all your work on a construction site, starting from actually organizing the tasks and the schedule, going through all the issues and managing resolving those issues, communication with investor and the subcontractor, right? Uh, all the documentation with revisions, all of this, uh, including health and safety inspections, quality inspections, and environmental inspections, all of this is currently in our system. We actually started with defect management. Our first project was Metro uh, project in Warsaw, so one of the biggest projects in, in my country, uh, which made us uh, resistant to complexity and resistant to tough working conditions. So. If uh, if the application doesn't act doesn't really work perfectly offline, uh, the people won't use it, right? Because if yeah. you're working underground, it just you know they won't use it. So we had to jump through all of those hoops. Right now we are at almost 1,100 sites uh, in eight countries. Wow! Uh, and starting with large infrastructure, we are currently being implemented on just building, you know, some houses or some renovation pro projects, right? So it has to be very flexible because if you are a contractor, that's the reality of the business, right? The projects will not be the same. Uh, they might be similar, but so you can copy some stuff, but they might not. They ha the the software has to be adjustable to what you need. It has to be extremely simple. So even actually, this is a fun fact from like. Uh, Recent time, we even have shipbuilders using custom, <laughs> uh, because you you change you know uh, concrete to steel and it's it's pretty similar, right? Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Actually, in a Second World War, found another far fact: there were ships built out of concrete, uh, which you can still see. Uh, there are still still some remains in the Baltic Sea uh, in, in some areas. So concrete uh, concrete ships, uh, which is uh, you know pretty pretty cool. Um, uh, so, so exactly, we, we help with project management and, and we focus on making our application the simplest application on the market and the simplest yeah. and the fastest. So 
uh, the goal is that well, actually, and the reality of this is when you, if you do not do whatever you want to do within 30 seconds of picking your phone out of your pocket, then we failed. So, yeah. uh, so Brilliant. that's why like submitting a defect in Hastro, uh, the, the record breaking time is 4.9 seconds on average it takes 22.5 seconds. So, and it's, you know, extremely precise as well, right? Yeah. Uh, Finding a document, uh, your right document takes under 10 seconds usually, right? Providing the information about the works you finished with pictures and area is showing the area you finished takes about 30 seconds, right? Altogether. Yeah. So it has to be very fast because as a lawyer, I remember all of those cases when somebody on, from the construction said, you know, uh, you know, uh, the drawing doesn't load to, you know, on my phone. So I will just do this in the office and then they forgot. Yeah. Uh, or went home. Then, went home. Yeah, they went home. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so so we are trying to avoid that, not by thinking as lawyers, but as just solving the, the issues of everybody like everybody's life as an engineer. So the goal is I'm actually solving a, a problem I had a number of years ago, but to solve this problem, I need to solve somebody else's problem first, right? Because <laughs> okay. uh, I need to help the engineer to help yeah. the lawyer uh, if anything happens uh, in the end. And I hope for all the lawyers, especially the younger ones, because the younger ones do not see the uh, money from the billable hours. Um, so n not to waste your life on just preparing for bullshit litigations or arbitrations when something could have been solved within like, 20 minutes on the construction site because that's just annoying. This shouldn't go to court. Everybody has something to do and we are overworked. Like every industry yeah. is currently overworked. We yeah. cannot uh, deal with everything in court. So try to just solve your problems on site when it's possible. So talk, talk to me about the the cost element of things and the, and the purchase and procurement of goods and services within the system. Um, have you got a, a sort of a tracking mechanism module in the platform that, you know, we said we were going to pay X for X service or product and now we're paying more or less or how do you, is there, is there something in the system that can track costs? Yeah. 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 Uh, good question. Actually, this was uh, something that we did pretty early. Um, uh, we had a, great user, uh, Wojtek Szleszynski, who is the head of quality at Warsaw Metro, uh, who really wanted to understand the potential financial implications of the issues that are coming from the construction site. So the pro problem is that sometimes the issues that can be a lot of them, a lot of defects, you know, minor ones, but they sum up to pretty yeah. big numbers when you collect everything. and. Um, we, we created this feature in which you can you can just even estimate those costs. And we did a study with uh, a couple of hundred diffusers trying to understand, which is a pretty cool psychological thing. And, and it says a lot uh, uh, about the engineers, because if you work in the field for a couple of years, uh, the estimations were usually up to 20% off from the final cost. So when somebody found a defect and estimated the potential cost of solving this, this was very close to the, the actual cost, right? Um, and this immediately gave the information to the contract manager and the quality manager, hey, you know, we might have some you know, financial impact based on this, so they could react faster. So everything we do is actually around, the, around reacting as fast as possible to important things. And like, uh, this is a way of, of also showing in an objective way what is the uh, what is the priority, right? Yeah. Because I, I was always very annoyed with all of my systems that I'm using where when I can say that my ticket, for example, for support or whatever, is high priority, low or you know medium. And you also have like a bunch of uh, standards that say what it means, right? But then people that actually provide this information, they do not know what it means and you have to have somebody trained to know and whatever, you are putting too much responsibility for too many people, it doesn't work. Too many layers, so we, yeah. We try to, uh, we try to un understand the f actual impact of, of issues on the construction site based on their financial impact and based on their 
time impact on other stuff, right? So uh, whenever you find an issue, you also provide the information. Did this issue actually impact any other works happening in construction site? Love if it. it stopped the work, it just automatically goes up because if he, if something stops our works, we might have a delay, right? Uh, uh, and we have to react fast. And uh, I think the best project to to test this, uh, and we are still, you know, making things better and, and working with our clients to make, you know, things smoother and smoother. We have this uh, very cool customer, uh, uh, K2 storage systems, they are doing intra logistics or whatever you have inside the uh, like storage facilities. Um, and their projects are very fast. <clears throat> so if you have, you know, like typical project, takes you know a couple of weeks then every hour hour you waste might you know accumulate and create like another day and if, if in like uh, extremely fast project that lasts a week if you have like one day delay uh you it's a significant delay for the project right so yeah. it's a significant pro uh, problem so um that's why we uh for you know uh, we we work with this company especially to make this as visible as fast as possible, so people react uh, a yeah. bit faster. So, and we did uh, we did some uh, some analysis on this, and uh, uh, with so we I would tell you like average numbers. Uh, so we, we did audits and compared this to a couple of other solutions, also Excel spreadsheets. So it's also something nice uh, to compare with. Uh, but with with faster after adding those changes of visibility, people reactor reacted forty seven percent faster. Uh, to the issues that are coming on on construction sites uh, rather than on other solutions, uh, which basically means that they didn't forget. <laughs> and yeah. They did. I, I think the biggest problem usually is that to make this first decision to assign this to somebody or, or to analyze it, uh, what what we have to do. And if you forget about doing this, then it stays in the system or in your Excel spreadsheet or in your head for a long time. Yeah. So reacting, so planning well. Being agile in planning and reacting fast to the bigger issues rather than to, you know, trying to fix everything at the same time is quite important because we also saw like uh, something that, that, you know, I me, I, I'm still learning. I'm learning about construction, real estate, you know, uh, and, and I always love to see something from like, as not from the inside, right? So when we did audits for like tech, uh, tech, technical acceptance process for some apartments. I, I remember that uh, they, uh, the representative of the general contractor uh, always called somebody um, to try to fix some of the issues during the meeting with the owner, right? Yeah. Um, and this basically was destroying that person's day because they had to just jump from one apartment to the other and they didn't fix everything, so they had to come back again and fix some other stuff. This was completely unstructured and wasted uh, actually a couple of dozens hours a week of those people because they big place you have to run around. And we asked why, and they said it's just to show to the to the buyer uh, that we will fix their issues at some point. To show them that we yeah, are yeah. fixing this right now, and th this will be fixed later. On. And it's just for show. Optics. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so just just the optics. So uh, uh, we calculated, and uh, together with the team, we decided that this doesn't work. Uh, we we asked also some buyers, did some like psychological research, and it just doesn't work. Uh, so they started organizing this, and at the end, actually, with this client, we we tested this on 280 uh, free apartments. During the two year, two months of technical acceptance process, we uh, saved over 400 hours of work. Jeez. Just, um, and one anecdote that I like um, was wow. there was an e young engineer uh, that was doing all of the, the previous process, to be honest, was based on Excel and pieces of paper. So it's always nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a great place to compare yourself with. Yeah. It's not a minor change. Uh, but I really loved the conversation I had with, with this, this lady. She was a young engineer, just came to this investment and they, the team told her basically, you have to sit down on your ass and to get this piece of paper and get data from this piece of paper, paper to this Excel spreadsheet. Then you have to figure out who, what subcontractor is at fault, send them the, you know, the reports and then, uh, 
conduct a call communication on how to fix this. And uh, when we when we implemented Hastry, there was another engineer that told her, you know, Hastry is coming for your job, so watch out. She said, "Thank God," because uh, we lost you being a young parents. engineer, you do not want to sit on your ass uh, like for two months putting things into your computer to Excel spreadsheet. You just want to be an engineer. You want to manage some works, do some actual uh, job and, and make a difference. You do not want to waste time of documentation. That's why software is for Astro or any other software. Just choose what, what, what works for you and help your team because otherwise it's pretty tough, um, tough to live with. When you understand that you might be losing 400 hours into into months, I would be really frustrated <laughs> working <laughs> with, for a company that would. Uh, and uh, you know, whenever I was this fr frustrated, I usually quit. Um, so having the troubles with finding the people doing our jobs, we should also give them the tools, whatever the two tools are that that will make them let more efficient, more efficient, right? more efficient, more yeah. efficient and no, not not waste their time, right? Nobody wants to waste uh, their time on placing some information into the system. So Ernest, um, if someone wants to get in touch with you or contact you, uh, what way do you work? Do you, uh, you know, give us some indication of, I mean, put it in the show notes, obviously, but how does people contact you? Uh, there are so many ways. So Joe, go to hastro.com h-u-s-t-r-o.com and you will even find my number so we are very <laughs> uh, very transparent uh, I, I still am not regretting this so there you know people are better than than you might think yeah uh, so i do not get a lot of spam uh, spam phone so uh, you can contact somebody from my team i'm also quite present on linkedin so just my there is only one ernest Chudelski on linkedin so it will be pretty easy, easy to find me um uh, and my email es at astro.com is also available for everybody. So get Again. in touch. Uh, we can have just a normal conversation. Uh, and I'm also something that I really love to talk about is, you know, how you approach, how people are approaching any change on a construction site, because this is like a very, very interesting industry that is different than other industries that I looked at. It's very hard to implement process changes where you are working such a distributed way when you have different projects everywhere yeah so if you have like a good uh practice of course uh you know share this with us uh, uh i would love to share this with other people we have to learn on our mistakes and, and try to get better step by step i love that and uh fair play to you ernest for everything that you're doing please keep doing it um and uh, we look forward to having you back maybe in the future, definitely, just to see uh, how your company has moved on. Because um, you know you're swimming, you're swimming with sharks. Um, <laughs> so um, I commend you for what you're doing. It's a big task. So well done, and thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs>